Hey guys, this is Chris here with Given Project Nerf, and today we're going to show you how we're building these full auto ravens for Paul out at PDK. Uh, there are some differences between the four different uh, colored ravens that are out there, and we're going to get into it a little bit, the uh, differences in the internals in them. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Alright guys, as I stated, we've got uh, all four generations and color schemes of Raven here. And like I said, each one's just a little bit different on the inside. Tonight we're going to be working on this brand new white Raven Fire. I've never opened one up myself, so it's going to be uh, very curious for me to see uh, how it compares to the other three that all have subtle differences. Let's get this sucker cracked open and get to it. Alright guys, I've uh, got the screws loose here. Now we're actually going to turn this over and dump it and put our screws in this little cup and hold them because we have to make modifications to the, this side of the shell as well so we can't just leave the screws in it. So, we'll go carefully and get the little bang here and try to collect all your screws up and put them in that cup. Uh, all of the screws in the Ravens are the same except these top two, just like a strife. Uh, they're just a little bit shorter. Uh, all the rest of the body screws are exactly the same, so it doesn't matter uh, where you put them when you go to put them back in, so you don't have to keep them in any kind of order, um, which I find to be convenient. Sometimes these ravens can be kind of a pain in the butt to open up. There's uh, some tabs in here that causes problems. But we should be pretty well ready to go with this one. Uh, I'll open the jam door and match it up in the back. I've got an independent mag release. This is one of the ones that is going to give us a fit. And you can see where it's holding right in here. Uh, so we're probably going to have to get a screwdriver and uh, pop that thing open with that. Alright, after a great deal of wedging and fighting and prying with screwdrivers. I actually even put some things in the bottom of this. It's a pity on a new blaster, but these tabs, you can see right here at the tip of my screwdriver, I guess they saw and welded them in. I'm not certain because they would not let go. Actually, I had to take an X-Acto and cut through them. Uh, didn't run into this. I've never run into it with any other Raven model. Uh, differences on the inside. Okay, I can see right now this one is different from the green Raven. It has a block coming off the barrel right here that is solvent welded. So if you're working on the green one with the glow mag, you're going to have to take your Dremel in here and cut this square where my screwdriver's at to get the barrel out of it. In this case, no problem. Just lift it up, take it out, put it in our cup back here. Inch strike tooth. Jam door. Uh, jam door pin normally is in there really, really good. Leave it. It's fine. Mag weld. Mag release. Take all that stuff out. Let's get our little screwdriver here. We're going to take the trigger out. It's a, it'll be the larger top hat screw. There's a few. Okay. This silver screw in here that holds this plate. Okay, we're going to keep the plate. It's got to be modified, but we're going to keep it and the screw. And the rev trigger now. Ravens pretty much develop sticky rev trigger because this right here. The only return on a Raven's trigger is that tiny little spring. And you can see this is a jeweler's screwdriver, guys. So that's all that pushes the Raven's rev trigger back out. So I've developed a method of putting a much heavier return spring in it. I'm going to show it to you guys when we get here. This is trash. Throw that lock away. This top hat screw, don't have to take out. I like to take it out um, because we're going to go to a different spring for the pusher return as well. So we're just going to Hold on to that for another time. The arm is no more good. Um, and then we're going to get back here. Uh, another difference. Uh, two of the blasters have three screws in this plate. Okay, this one, as you can see, has one, two. The yellow Raven, the Stinger, also has only two. And this nub right here sticks up kind of high. So it's going to have to be cut down for our gearbox to go. It's going to set right in here. Okay. The... Elite Raven and the Yellow Raven with the Glow Mag actually have a third screw that goes right there. So, again, just subtle differences between the models. It's funny the things that they've changed over the years. But we're going to take our plate out here. We can 
silver screws. Lift that out of there. And this top hat screw, we're going to keep the screw. All of this stuff over here, all of that's junk. Uh, the pusher will lift out the compression spring, stock one. We're not keeping any of that. The cage in a Raven is not screwed in. It just friction fits over top of these posts. So lift it, start taking your electronics out, give them a yank, don't be nice to them. We're throwing all of this crap away. So getting that out, get rid of that. We got one more switch up here. There we go, that's coming out. You can just kind of literally rip the wires out of it. And there it is, a completely torn down Raven. So we're going to start with, in the uh, next segment here, uh, addressing the battery tray and getting it set up for our LiPo. Okay guys, to do our battery, we've got these tabs on the inside that hold the springs. Now we need to clear all of this out to make space for our LiPo battery and uh, wiring with the XT60 connector. So best way i found to do that, take your small screwdriver. Okay. Wedge up underneath these tabs and stand them up straight. You can even use a needle nose plier to help you straighten them out. Okay, and they're just friction fit. So if you take the little screwdriver and set it on top here and give those a whack, what you end up with, like this, and you can see the springs are pretty well sticking out of this already anyway. Sometimes you gotta get a screwdriver under them to pop them the rest of the way out. There we go. So there's the top ones. The bottom one, okay, you've got a center post that's exactly the same as the top. We're gonna do the same thing. Hey, okay, now the main posts on here are very thick and heavy and are not gonna go through the battery tray easily, so we're gonna use a pretty heavy cutter and try to take as much of those off as we can. Like that. And it just makes it easier to push out of the body of the blaster without doing a bunch of dremeling and stuff like that. We need to get rid of these areas in the middle the best way I have found to do it. I'm only gonna do one here on camera and I'll take care of the rest and come back to you. Just take a flush cutter like this and you can get as close to the edge as you can get and cut it straight down. Same thing on the other side. Okay. The great thing about this plastic is typically it's rigid enough that if you get a good straight cut on it like that, you can take it and bend it a little bit and it will break off flush at the bottom. So sometimes it's good to get a plier and work it a little bit. Some in the middle they could be a little bit of a pain. But you can start to see exactly what I've got going on here. Guys, I'm not suggesting this is the best way. I'm just saying it's a way that has worked out for me for quite a while now. So if we keep working that for a few minutes, that's going to break off pretty clean to the bottom of the tray. There we go. So what you got there, and that's pretty flush, guys. You really don't even have to sand that anymore. Um, and then the upper tabs and the lower ones. Don't know how well you can see it. Hopefully you can. On what would be the bottom of the blaster where the mag goes in, there's a tab right there, right there, and there's one in the middle right here. So since we've already taken this center section out, take your X-Acto knife, get as close to the body as you can, and cut that tab down. And then you can take a plier or a screwdriver or something like that and get it behind the tab, hopefully, and do it just like that and just break it out of there. All of this can be cleaned back up later with a Dremel. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these out and get back to you. Hey guys, as you can see, I've got all the tabs out. Now you can see right here, I've widened this out. This is where our wires are going to come into the battery tray. But taking all that stuff out makes plenty of room for our small 2S battery, the uh, XT60 connector, and the wiring coming in from the blaster. So let's move on. Okay, like I said, we were talking about differences. Like I said, in the green one, like I said, the barrel is actually solvent welded into this square, so you have to cut that out with the Dremel. The other three, the barrel and muzzle pulls right out. On the other three blasters, okay, when you go to convert them to full auto, see if I can get this turned around where you can see it. 
our gearbox is going to sit right here. There's a tab that sticks up right here where my screwdriver is up. It sticks up like this. You have to cut it down. I noticed in this one, it's already gone. So that's a good thing. Uh, less shell cutting for us. Okay. The width of the track in these Ravens is different. The yellow Stinger Raven has a very wide track like this. Okay. Much wider. Okay. The Blue Elite and obviously this one. Uh, are much, much skinnier, and we're going to be using a hooligan kit, and we'll discuss that later, but uh, when they came, they came wide, set up for that stinger, so I had to cut this down to fit in the track. Now, a little warning on this one right here, see the screw tab for the battery cover right at the end of my screwdriver, you see that? There's a little tab sticking up that we're going to have to cut off for the pusher arm to slide all the way forward. So, we're going to get rid of that little tab right there. And we're going to make a little space in here for some wiring, okay? We're going to cut right here. Just cut that out so we can drop the wire in and run it up this way. This one, right here, again, just cut that down so wires can come through here. And then the only other thing that we have to do to this side of the shell, this tab right here where the original switch sat, just cut that off flush. Okay, there is shell cutting for, for this kit on the other side. Okay. First thing, this depression right here in the top underneath the jam door, that's got to go. It's got to be up flush with this body line. So we've got to cut it. Flushed up as we can get. We've made cuts on the sides. Again, just take a plier or something like that and fold the plastic down and uh, work it a few times like this. And there we go, that'll pop off. We'll clean the rest of that up with the Dremel and this wall. Um, is actually gets in the way of the pusher arm too. It will actually catch the pinion rack right there, so we're gonna just uh, take a bit of that out of there too. I'll flush to the body, and then this piece again, we can just take our pliers and bend. Hopefully, it, it'll come out of there. There we go, it's starting to go. Okay, and that is. Pretty much it. We're going to clean these up so they're very flush, um, so there's nothing to catch, okay, the pinion like this coming through. You see that's jagged, but you see what I was talking about, the wall and the way the teeth set, it will get caught, so the, this has to be cut down. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up, and then we'll, uh, we'll start putting this thing together. Okay, uh, switch placement in these, uh, I like to do uh, pretty simple. Now. I'm cheating a little bit. I've got this amazingly cool 3D printed part. Yes, it's pink. No one cares. This will save you a lot of work. This is actually a Raven switch plate. It's designed to go over these crossbars right here. So, literally, you uh, find the gap in it. And in this one's case, here's a little difference. There's a bar here that's not in the other Raven, so we're going to have to take that now. You learn something new every time you do this. We're pretty close now. It goes like that, it goes like that. And we still have to do a little trimming on that lower bar, but literally that drops in there. It's a very tight friction fit. You can put a little super glue underneath. And then your switch, or whatever it is that you're going to use, uh, like this long arm Tempco that I favor so greatly, just push this down onto it just like that. So, we're going to clean this up, get the uh, switch in place properly, the right length, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to make a return spring for the pusher arm. Okay, you can see we've got our plate installed. Those are really, really good. Again, I got that from my buddy Luke out of darts. Definitely, if you're going to work on Ravens, it's well worth grabbing them, guys. They're not very expensive. Like, they're like a buck fifty a piece and save you so much BS. Um, I've cut the arm down. Uh, to the proper length on our rev trigger switch. Okay, and that by itself is okay, um, but the switch over the course of time, the spring in that will slack it up and not return your rev trigger. So we're going to make a rev trigger spring. So we've got one more little shell cut on each side to make right here. Okay, Let's see if I can get my screwdriver. Right there underneath the rev trigger on both sides of the shell, we're going to take that tab out, and that's going to make room for a spring we're going to put in it. Spring, okay, I got this at uh, True Value. It's a 3 8 diameter spring which fits over the shank of the rev switch. Now, this is a pretty beefy spring, so we're only going to cut like 
a coil and a half off of it. You can see I've just been cutting it down to what I need. So get our big cutters in here and we'll be able to try that and uh, see how this works for us. Okay, and that's going to work out okay. Last thing we got to do is our cover right here that would drop in. We have to cut this bottom piece off of that. So, literally, right there, make a clean cut, and then cut everything off around the screw boss. Nice and flush, like this. And what that's going to do is going to give our spring something to rest against. Gonna screw that back down in there like that. There we go. And that's that's beautiful. Clicky. Uh, the return spring is plenty strong to hold that in place. It's not on the way of any of our screw balls to screw it back together. So this switch is installed. The other micro switch, and let me see if I can find where these go. We're going to cut the arm down on it as well. I use these very long arm switches so I can cut them to the length I want. But what I like to do on Raven triggers, on the bottom side, there's this nice tab sticking off. So when it sits here, like that, see this orange tab? Right? We're going to set the switch in here so that it catches the lever like that. So we're going to cut this down. It's going to set about like that and that orange tab on the trigger is going to engage our second switch. So I'm going to get the epoxy putty out, get that installed, and we're going to make our return spring. Now that's really, really easy for uh, this. We're going to drill a hole right here in the front and attach an extension spring right there. So I'm going to get that done. We'll come back to you. I'll show you what we got. Okay, as you can see, our epoxy putty's hardened up a bit. We've got our switch mounted. We made our spring, right? We just drilled a hole, and all you have to do is hook it over. Remember, the front boss is going to drop in here, the front muzzle, right there, and you've got to hide that little piece of spring. It doesn't hurt anything. And just like we had talked about, the pin that sticks down on the trigger pulls our trigger. Nice and clicky. While I was waiting for our epoxy putty to set up, I went on ahead and did the 5 cage. Um, you guys have seen me do that a hundred times, so we didn't go there too much. Only real difference is, okay, a Raven cage, the motors face what would be the left side of the blaster, so they'd be facing up, which is great. It makes it easier to wire, in my opinion. Um, this white one does have a couple of differences. Okay, the white Raven fire, the motors actually have some glue on them in the holes, and you really have to wrestle the uh, motor cans with some pliers uh, to get them out. Generally, you'll end up tapping on the shafts and busting the guts out of them, and then you can grab the can with a big heavy plier and give it a twist and it'll pop out of there. And the Raven Fire is the only Raven that has white flywheels. Uh, every other one has a white cage and orange wheels. So uh, no other real differences to report there. Um, when I do mine, I do the top motor, right, the barrel will be coming out. So the top motor with a red dot forward, the other one red dot backwards, okay. So this is going to be our positive side of the cage. This is going to be our negative. Okay, here's the pusher kit that we're going to be using. Now, this pusher kit was purchased from the Holigan Blaster Company, and it looks like a really, really nice kit. It's got this nice uh, hold-down block. The gearbox attaches to it. Put a screw there, and you can screw through the body as well. And it comes with its pinion gear, and it comes with a pusher arm. Um, sadly, I cannot recommend this kit. Um, it is wrought with issues. First of which, as I said, this base part of the pusher arm was probably close to twice that thick. Now on the Raven Stinger would not be a problem. On all the rest of them, it won't fit and drop into the body. You can see here the channel is very narrow and I had to file that down so that it would fit in there. Uh, if it was twice that width, it wouldn't drop in. So, But with 3D printed parts, there's normally some fitting required. Um, however, that's not just the crux of it. Uh, take a look, it comes with a uh, motor and gearbox. Uh, as with most kits, uh, the motor is a 2S motor. It's very slow, um, very boring, just not cool. Um, so we're, we're going to swap that out. Um, 
the pinion gear and pinion on this line up nicely and everything works well. The problem is that with the motor anchored in place, okay, and the pinion on it, the arm doesn't push far enough forward to push the darts into the flywheel. They actually made this one tooth too short. And then they made the gear also one tooth too short. So we had to completely redo and modify this. So here's one that I did. Okay, there is also one more problem. This recession right here, we screw the spring on. The uh, It's not deep enough. The screw head will stick up proud and actually rub on the side of the on the gearbox like this. So to correct the problems with the pusher, you can see here I actually 3D printed an extra tooth, okay, and epoxy done on it. And I also used a screw. Now that's no problem because we're pushing it that way, so that's that's good and strong. It's not ever going to go anywhere. Um, and I have a gearbox here that I set up. Our Michel 2O motor is in there, uh, so that's been taken care of. And you can see here, here's my pinion gear, and if you count the teeth on it, you can see that this one has seven and our rack with the extra one has seven. This will make it push far enough and then for the end of the pusher head uh, you can clearly see there's a a difference there. Um, I trimmed this down and I printed this head with an angle on it uh, to give us a little more definitive push into the flywheel cage. So if you're going to purchase these hooligan kits um, uh, you're going to have to do a lot of work to make them work properly. Uh, secondly, Hooligan is notorious for very, very slow shipping times. It took them eight weeks uh, to get these kits out to me. They do not come with a return spring for the pusher arm. They don't come with instructions. There's no instructions on their website. Uh, would not recommend this kit to anybody. So just a heads up on that. But uh, I've already prepped this kit that we're going to put in the Raven here. So I'm going to get all that installed for you. And uh, I'll get back to you. Alright, so you can see I've screwed this down and I've got this hooked up to my little test box here. And uh, we may have to do a little fine tuning on these teeth. It actually needed like six and a half uh, to get a full push. Uh, we've got seven, so did a little filing on this gear, a little filing on this tooth. It's rough, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, pop this thing with the battery and see if it'll go. All right, guys, let me uh, break down the wiring on this thing for you. It's actually a very simple pattern. If you've ever done a full auto strife, or you know, you, especially if you wired a rapid strike, this is, uh, this is easy stuff. So from our XT60 connector here, you know, that goes inside the stock battery tray, the wire runs out under this orange plate around to the normally open position on our rev trigger switch. Okay. Now, the reason I use the normally open is because you have to if you're going to do braking on the motors. Now in this case we did not put braking on the flywheel motor so it doesn't really matter but as a force of habit now I always wire my hot lead into the normally open position. Okay so when you press the rev trigger and close the switch okay it sends power to the common tab which is now acting as our output. There were two wires running off of that. The first runs up here around to the normally open okay on our pusher motor switch. Okay. The second runs right up here to the flywheel cage. So when you press this, it revs the flywheels and sends power to this switch for the pusher. Simple, easy. Okay, there were no negative wires at all on this switch. Okay. The common on the pusher switch, very, very simple. When it connects, after you've pulled the rev trigger, we have power coming in here. Okay. Comes up when you push the switch closed, sends power to the common tab, which runs out to our pusher motor. So it runs out underneath all of this stuff. Drilled a couple little holes right here. This sets clean underneath the magazine. Very easy. The wires route right under here underneath the mag release. When we put that back in, no problem. Right to the positive on our pusher motor. Okay, that's the positives. The negative runs from the battery right here at our XT60 under the plate, under the flywheel cage, to the normally closed position on the pusher switch. 
Okay, and this is what we call motor braking. So what happens when you release the switch, this negative current flows to the common and grounds this motor out and makes it stop really, really quickly. You could also do it with your flywheels if you want them to spin down really quick, but Paul didn't request it, so we didn't do braking on the flywheels. Okay, this other black lead, okay, runs right over here to the flywheel cage. And then this wire soldered on here, Okay, it's just jumped. You could do this all with one piece of wire if you wanted to. Runs down around here and comes to the negative on our pusher switch. Now you see we've got a battery in it, so let's uh, let's see if this thing works. Okay. All right, well our flywheel cage goes. And our pusher works, so we're good to go. I'm gonna button this thing up and we'll give it a test fire. All right, guys, here it is, the finished product. It's got the really cool white and clear magazine in it. I've got that loaded up along with a 12 mag. Um, let's see how it goes. Watch the ducks. Here goes the 12. Just a thing of beauty. Guys, Till next time, this is Chris for Project Nerd saying, have a blast.